Right, what I've got here is a real blast from the past, certainly for myself. Um, this is a BSA Air Sporter from the late 1970s to the very early 80s, probably 78 to 1980. Um, and these were the sort of guns that were around when I was in my youth. And uh, I would have loved one of these. I never owned one. The nearest I got to an air sporter was uh, a BSA Super Meteor that I had when I was in school. Um, and pretty much everyone would have loved one of these back then. And you can tell instantly guns from that era, especially the BSAs from that era, because they all had these very pale beach stocks. Um, it was a common current theme in the late 70s and very, very early 1980s uh, of BSA. Not just BSA, because the Webley Osprey also had a very pale, um, almost yellowy um, stock on it. As did the first original 45s and the original 50 T01 as well. Some of the first ones of them had very pale stocks. So it was a, a big, it was a thing back then that, that was the sort of thing that the rifles had, a trend, if you like. Um, but especially in BSAs, the Meteor, Super Meteor, the Mercury and the Air Sporter all had these pale beechwood stocks, um, which is a good way, even if you don't know what the serial number is, as soon as you see all this sort of pale stock, you know straight away it's going to be a very late 70s, uh, very, very early 1980s uh, era rifle. So this one's in really nice condition, really, really is very nice. The only non-original thing on it, um, and I've put this on, is the guy who had this had it in his gun cabinet, hardly shot it at all, but he had a tele sight on it and he removed the rear sight uh, and the foresight protector and couldn't remember what he'd done with them. <laughs> so unfortunately, when I got this, it came without the proper uh, rear sight. So I just put this on from my spares box, but I will, I have got somewhere um, a proper original period BSA rear sight that will be fit into this rifle because I don't want to use a scope on this I just want to shoot this with open sights so let's have a little look at it so standard BSA ramped foresight the sunken barrel to protect the uh, the crown beautifully blued unlike some of the earlier uh, mid 70s BSAs that had um, sort of a stove enamel black paint type finish on them. They went back to the uh, the bluing. So BSA Guns Limited, BSA logo and the calibre all stamped on the top. You can see how good the bluing is. The bluing is really nice. Rear sight, uh, as I say, this is non original. Loading tap, pretty straightforward. This one is, let's see that, still a nice tight fit on it. Nicely blued cylinder, and as was common also back then, the air sporter was, or BSA air sporter bit, was picked out in gold lettering. Um, they did this on the Mercury and on the Super Meteor as well. Uh, I don't think the Meteor had it on it though, but certainly the Mercury and the Air Sporter did. And then we come to the rather swoopy breech block that was common to all BSAs back then. Um, a cast um, composite metal alloy. Beautiful looking thing, swooped into the stock with the swoopy trigger guard and the trigger. Looked great, um, but it was a bit of a disadvantage because it meant that sometimes you struggled to get decent eye relief with your scope because the rails didn't run as far back as some of the German air rifles where the uh, cylinder would end in a little block about here and the rails would run all the way to the back. On the air sporters and the Mercuries, they didn't. They, f they were fairly short. They weren't very deep and they weren't very long either, um, which was one of the one of the downsides of these um, early air sporters and the Mercury. Um, so it was better to use a one piece mount um, if you could afford one. Though a lot of people couldn't and shot these things with open sights and they were perfectly serviceable. 
nice stock as you can see this one is really unmarked it's in really nice condition very pale beach stock with the standard BSA logo butt pad on it tiniest of sheet pieces very very slight almost nothing to be fair and you could shoot these guns ambidextrous um, because there was so little of a cheap piece it didn't really matter this one's got slight little bit of grain showing on it on the woodwork but not a lot as you would expect from a beach stock to be fair perhaps a little bit more you've got some flecking and whatnot on this side um, in all honesty this isn't a bad one I've seen some that are just plain yellow with nothing at all on them. action held on bolt through the bottom of the pistol grip and two side screws cocking lever underneath and that Webley trigger that was adjustable though to be honest it was only a single stage unit and wasn't perhaps the best trigger in the world that was ribbed there were ridges on the trigger and to be fair despite only being a single stage the feel on it was actually very good uh, on the air sporters and the mercury's it was quite a crisp single stage let off and uh, generally very nice to be fair not as sophisticated as a german rifle nowhere near when you compare it to a feinwerk bow or a weirauch or the originals the triggers on the bsa's were definitely um, below par but they weren't a bad trigger and in its defense this gun was very very accurate they had great barrels um, really good barrels on them and they also had an innovative um, piston seal um, that cut down on the vibration and cut down on bounce as well at the end of the stroke um, and were very powerful the air sporters were really really right up there um, with power this one is generating about ten and a half foot pounds in two two cal, um, which isn't too bad. It'd probably generate more if I resprung it. But to be honest, it shoots so sweet with the spring that's in it that uh, I am going to leave it as is because it is pretty much original. It's seen very very little use. Like I said, the chap that owned it bought this from new. Spent most of his life just sat in a gun cabinet. He was a bit of a shotgun fanatic. Just fancied an air gun. Obviously had a bit of brass and bought himself one of these because these were not a particularly cheap gun. The air sporter was the top of the BSA range until the introduction of the uh, air sporter S. Originally came out in about 1947-1948 and died the death when they brought out the uh, the uh, super sport uh, not the super sport superstar pardon me the other underlever with the rbx rb2 loading tap and that replaced the air sports and the last ones were the s's um which went back after about 1982 i think BSA stopped making these light coloured stocks and went to a darker, uh, more Germanic looking stock that was stained. Still made out of beach, most of them, um, apart from the S ones, which were made out of walnut. Um, but they stained them a walnut colour to make them look more Germanic, I think. I still think, I've got to say, I still think that the air sporters are amongst the finest looking air rifles ever made spring air rifles they're such a sleek streamlined design they really are things of utter beauty that's e even this one which isn't an s it's nothing particularly fancy but what a lovely looking thing so streamlined very 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 nice and the thing is you can pick these up relatively cheaply as well a couple hundred quid will buy you quite a nice one and for the life of me, I can't understand why anyone would trot off and buy a cheap Turkish rifle, a Hatsan or whatever, or a Kral or an SMK or something like that. I don't understand why anyone would pay a couple of hundred quid for one of those, 200 quid say, 
when they could buy off gun trader or from another gun shop because there was loads of these around uh, one of these rifles much better built much better quality and iconic and still just as powerful and just as accurate and and will hold their value considerably better if i was recommending someone to look for a cheap springer to use for uh, hunting or plinking or whatever i would say forget new rifles get on gun trader get down your gun shop and uh, find yourself one of these little beauties quality accurate really accurate good quality and powerful air rifles that will hold their value and are iconic so much better looking so much better built very 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 nice rifles like that one tip for, a st for someone starting out forget a new gun forget a new crown and don't worry about parts you can still get parts for these There's still plentiful supply of bits and pieces for these rifles um, it's not difficult to get parts if you need them and any gun shop or if you're particularly strong you can change the spring yourself easy enough they're just great great rifles really really class thanks for watching